And my name is Daniel Posny, and this is Shifting Perspectives. So this is going to be about 10 or 15 minutes on a certain topic, which kind of just comes in at the last minute. This one is related to, um, you know, forgiving ourselves and feeling guilt and shame, and, you know, from our past and what we did or what we didn't do. All those things that if you're a human being, you probably had some experience with, you know, whether you're a little kid or you're an adult. Um, but if you've been listening to this um, for a while, then you probably know that whatever you're feeling that you've been having in your adulthood probably tracks back to something in your childhood, whether you, you know it, remember it or not, it usually tracks back to that. Um, I was just kind of meditating, closing my eyes, thinking about my past and my childhood or, you know, when a uh, young adult and um, different experience I had in relationship and mistakes I made in um, parenting and all those, I could pick up so many. We could have a ch chat all day long about all the things that I did wrong. But I think about that, you know, where I was at that time. And I was very insecure, um, just moving from reaction in the best way that I knew how. Uh, if things got too wonky, I would just go off and go do something or um, drink or, you know, do sports or something. And that was just what I knew. I didn't know anything else than that. So, yeah, I can look back and say, oh, I should have treated my kids better. I should have treated my wife better. I should have not done that in that relationship or all those kind of things. But when you're there, when you're in it, it's kind of like, um, imagine how it might be in a combat situation or when you're, when you're um, a first responder or something, you just, you're moving in a way that, that makes the most sense to you that the, with the tools and awareness that you have at the time. And then I got to thinking about what makes me who I am right now, that I could look back at myself and have some kind of judgment about how I didn't do it right, or I should have done it differently. And, you know, there's a saying that goes along with, you know, as you get older, you become older and wiser. And, I'm, and it's just very over, oversimplification of what's going on from my perspective. So we're going to go a little deep right now about what I feel is actually happening as I progress and I start to kind of um, awaken my consciousness more. I start to become more clear. So the, the process has been um, shit happened. Uh, had a big breakdown in my life, um, thought about leaving the planet, and that caused me to kind of really open up and really start to look at a different way of living. I knew that the, the way I had been doing it was not healthy, and, and I don't know how much longer I could have done it. And then I started to kind of look at myself. I started to look at my patterns and my beliefs, and what that does is now this is not something I can prove, but it just seems like this is the case from what other um, uh, quantum reality and quantum physics and um, talk about dimensions and that kind of thing, what it kind of goes into. And it's this, as we make choices and we make decisions, we step into another frame of reality. You can think of like your life as all these different frames, thousands and thousands of frames. And if you, move that frame in a certain way, your, your brain looks, makes it look like it's moving. So that's how like motion pictures work. So each frame you can think of as a different reality of consciousness. And then you make a choice, boom, oh, you're in this other reality where you've made that choice. Oh, you made the an opposite choice. Oh, you're down in this the other reality. So just think about making those choices over and over again. And as you make choices that put you in a, a higher state of being or um, a higher frequency of consciousness that you're more aware of more things. You're not so closed off with your, um, the reactions and your thoughts of your mind. So on both ends of the scale, let's talk about like the person that's really in their egoic mind and their reaction mode and everything is everyone else's fault. That's at one end of the scale. And then you take the same person who's had some kind of um, waking up, not woke, but waking up of consciousness that they've kind of found themselves, they've opened up their hearts and they kind of realized that um, kind of the suffering in their life has been due to their own decisions and patterns and beliefs and how they feel about the world. So they've kind of opened up to that. 
Now you put them on that other end of that scale and their life looks differently. So you, you kind of track that person as they keep on going along and they start, it's not so much about being older and wiser because this can happen in a flash and it can happen over you know 20 years like with me. I thought it was going to happen in a flash. Oh, I'm going on a spiritual path. Oh, I'm going to become enlightened and I'm going to become this guru. Boom. And that's not what happened. But what did happen is that things started to expand for me just in awareness of uh, come ideas, thoughts. Um, awareness is really the best word for it. So it's kind of like you, you just find yourself existing in the field of expanded consciousness. And in that expanded consciousness, new solutions arise, new feelings are there, new awareness of um, life and, and uh, human circumstance and all it just, they're just kind of there. And it's not that you've done the, the research so much to make you wiser and more knowledgeable. It's just that those things that kind of kept you squashed down into your mind and what your only your mind thought about things um, was lifted away. And then you're left with this new expanded consciousness. It's sort of the same thing that happens with certain psychedelic um, drugs and plants that it removes that, that boundary, that barrier that keeps you in this limited point of view. When you open that up, LSD, psilocybin, ayahuasca, all these different things activate our mind in such a way that it removes those barriers and people find themselves in just an expanded state of awareness or consciousness. So if we take all that and we say, okay, looking back to where I came from before I had a, a little bit more expanded awareness or consciousness, I didn't have that expandedness. So how can I expect to know what I know now in this expanded consciousness? See what I'm getting at? It's like you're, we're, we're judging ourselves and we're putting this guilt and shame us or our mind is putting this guilt and shame on us for something we had no access to. So yeah, I could go back to my life 20 years ago and go, hold on a second. Let's, <laughs> you know, you'd kind of tap into something different and you, like if I was there with my old self, I'd kind of grab him by the back of his shirt. Hold on, Daniel. Don't, 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 don't do that. <laughs> you know, don't do it. Wait, wait, don't say that. <laughs> you may, may want to just take a breath. You know, it would be that kind of thing. But back then I was just, I was very limited in my, my awareness of what I was doing, what, what patterns I had and what beliefs that I had and what was coming out of my mouth. So things just kind of blur, blur, blurred out. And so what do you expect? <laughs> so, of course, I forgive myself. And of course, we should forgive ourselves because it, it helps us feel better about ourselves. But forgiveness also says that there's something done wrong. And I don't believe that there's anything done wrong. And, and, I, and let me explain this. Yes, things were done in a way that caused pain to other people. And those other people were also in the same frequency that I was. So it, it, it would it take multiple people to cause this suffering. So yeah, there was pain, there was suffering, there was things that I said and did that caused people heartache and pain. Yes. But I don't think anything was done wrong. Like I don't know that, that I could have done right. In the way, in the consciousness that I am now, I couldn't have done right. I couldn't have done something that didn't look wrong. Am I explaining that right? I was doing the best that I could and it wasn't wrong in the moment. Of course, if I did something now, being who I am now and being in the, the consciousness that I am now, yeah, it would, it would be wrong for me to do something like that. But think of, think of that realm of consciousness as like a holodeck. Like you remember on Star Trek, it was a holodeck. And imagine that each holodeck that you could step into is a different frequency of consciousness. And you could only kind of um, be qualified or match or get a pass into the consciousness that you yourself were kind of vibrating at, the, the natural awareness and consciousness that you exhibited, that you embodied. You'd be able to kind of be qualified to go into these different realms.
Otherwise, you'd have to go over here. <laughs> so I couldn't even go back to the realm that I came from because I, I couldn't get a pass there. And so here I am. I'm in this consciousness now of just, um, I'm still Daniel, but I'm not so locked into my mind and my thoughts and my insecurities about who I think I am and how people are hurting me. And, you know, it was very, um, you can tell my shoulders come up and I kind of shrink down. I was just trying to, you know, keep myself protected. So long story short, I don't know that we could, uh, what I say, could we really have done better back then? Not from my limited perspective, not from my insecurities, not from my um, lack of understanding and lack of awareness of psychology and metaphysics and reactions and all those things that you know I've grown accustomed to now. So I can only say that I look back at my life and oh, I have a lot of compassion for the pain that I caused myself and the pain that I you know, joined with others. And that's, yeah, that's one that uh, will probably never leave me in the feeling of softness and compassion and empathy. And here I am now. So I don't let myself get, get, let my mind kind of pull me back there into guilt and shame. Spent enough time there. I was in 10 years of guilt and shame with not being a good parent and not being a good person and all these things. I finally had to pull myself out of it and say, okay, now I'm here, done enough time there. Now I can start to work on myself more. And so uh, what else did I say? Uh, most of us have spent a wasted time feeling guilt and shame stemming from the way we performed in the past. Now from where we sit, it's easy to judge ourselves and tell ourselves that we should have known better, done better. So who is it that's judging ourselves and you know saying all these things? It's that ego of mind again. It's that mind that says you should have done that. I know that you know you know better now, but still, couldn't you have said something differently, or could you have not caused that pain? Not really. When when I'm in that kind of pain, you you know, we our mind wants to inflict the pain upon others, so other people know this pain. There's all kinds of psychological reasons why we do this, but I find it just healthier to kind of pull ourselves back there and just don't dive into the whole. I should have not said that word or should have not had sex with that person or done this. That's where I was back then. And this is where I am now. And I guarantee there's probably not a person on the or many people on the planet that haven't gone through their own crap, that haven't you know, gone through some kind of not being a good person for a little bit. And that caused them, that caused them to, to use that as a catalyst for their own spiritual path or whatever. There may be a couple people that I've heard about that are kind of begin as this uh, being of light, but there's pretty rare from what I've seen. Most of us go through some kind of crap in our life and, and we, we deal with it the best, best way that we can. And then some people use it as a catalyst to, to find themselves in a different way. So hopefully that helps. That's my perspective. Take it or leave it. <laughs> <laughs> that's um that's just a perspective that's helped me to continue to to be here right now and um be with that person that was 20 years ago and allow him to to sit here right beside me and be with me let's have a beer together you know let's let's hang out together i love you and i always say you know if he were just you know step in this room i'd have to say excuse me i need to go tackle this guy with love because that guy was just doing the best that he could. So hopefully that that serves you and um, that makes it for a little softer um, forgiveness in your past. All right, I love you, thank you, bless you, and hope to see you next time, bye.